Hello again folks, uh, you might recall my video where I showed you these uh, cheap clone Nintendo controllers uh, This is a SNES one and I also had the, the Nintendo Entertainment System on the NES I, And in that video I explained to you that I was going to utilise the PCB and USB cable um, To convert a retro joystick such as this one here with a 9 pin uh, plug on the end uh, to USB so that I can use it on my uh, Raspberry Pi from my Amiga emulator you know and use a proper real old skill uh, joystick on, on that emulator um, so yeah we're going to use a PCB put it inside that you know tack the wires from the buttons and switches onto the, the pads inside you know and that would convert it now having thought about it I really don't want to do that I do have real physical Amigas and I'd like to keep the joystick uh, original so my other option was to utilize the PCB mount it in a box with the USB lead coming out and have a 9 pin D socket so that I could plug uh, essentially plug the you know real joystick into the side of the box uh, and you know thus convert it to, to USB but having thought about that I don't particularly want to do that as well um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to build my own retro style joystick and uh, this will be part one of uh, a series of videos showing you how to do that. And in this uh, part one, I'm just going to show you the actual components I'm going to use. So we'll get started. Um, this is part one. This is the NES controller, which I have stripped apart. And what that's left us with is a nice long uh, USB lead uh, and a PCB um, with the um, contacts for the normal buttons. And all we're going to have to do is um, tack wires onto these um, these buttons from our uh, replacement joystick or our, the joystick we're going to use uh, and obviously the buttons itself um, and then it'll basically be a USB joystick. Now obviously it's not going to be uh, very tidy. I'll show you the joystick. So this is a joystick here. It's obviously not going to be tidy like that. Um, so we're going to have to put it in an enclosure as well. So. Um, the enclosure I'm going to use um, is one of these. Uh, you can search for the part number, SIM 626070. That's, 6070. Um, that's uh, from Farnell, or Farnell, and this is actually a Hammond case. Um, and as you can see, it does have a flange uh, on either side for screwing down to, you know, on a wall or whatever that may be. So what I've done is I've uh, actually cut these off, cut the flanges off the side uh, using my Dremel and a, you know, a, a cut off disc and that's left us with a nice uh, square enclosure uh, for us to mount onward parts in. So speaking of parts, we've got our joystick itself <clears throat> and this is a really nice uh, joystick. This is available from uh, AliExpress for around three and a half quid including delivery to UK and I have to say it is really uh, of superb build quality. Uh, we get the handle itself with a nice threaded brass insert, nice chromed steel shaft, very thick, well fairly thick um, and the, the micro switches themselves are really super quality. You can hear that nice, you know, nice clicking action there um, and we get a little bit of trim uh, which we put over uh, the shaft and that covers the hole um, on the enclosure uh, to stop dust from getting in but this really is super quality uh, I can't you know tell you how, how good it is uh, especially for the money uh, really solid of course it maybe wouldn't stand up to daily use in, a, in an arcade or whatever um, but for the home user as somebody that's going to be using it you know fairly lightly but you know not even lightly i mean it's it's really good quality it's going to last also and again <clears throat> super quality <clears throat> sorry excuse me i'm still getting over this cold um again super quality i've got these 33 millimeter um arcade switches and these were a pound each unbelievable a pound um, and I'll basically show you the construction. We've got um, obviously a, a nylon uh, nut, um, a little uh, back plate, and basically you drill a hole, pop this through, pop the black bit on, screw it on, tighten it up, 
there is a little key in here as well to stop it from rotating which is nice um, and then we've got the actual switch assembly itself so uh, um, switch uh, it goes in like so and these are quite tight fit but you just pop them in and you can see the little pegs that go in and then you just bend and they're really tight so there's no risk of these falling out once you've constructed it like so we've got a little uh, wedge type um, LED because these are backlit or you know illuminated buttons and wh what that does so we've got our uh, LED uh, switch mount on the micro switch itself and that goes into the bottom this way I think like so it's just a bayonet fit and you see when you press the the button down this little white nylon piece uh, actuates the micro switch um, yeah a pound each including delivery absolutely superb quality now um, I didn't necessarily want to use illuminated buttons um, it just so happened that these looked really good quality and they were fairly cheap um, but these are set up for um, 12 volts so looking at the leads I can see there's a thicker lead and a thinner uh, gauge lead um, so what I'm hoping to do is um, and presumably this will have you know a resistor soldered on um, to to drop the the 12 volts down to you know three volts or whatever this led actually operates at so um i don't obviously have the specification of the led but i should be able to google and find out from the value of the resistor um you know what type of led it is and then replace uh, the resistor there we go replace that resistor with an appropriate uh one to drop it down to around uh, five volts um you know so we can actually have these buttons illuminated and uh, yeah so that's pretty much it for the, the you know the the parts uh, so just a quick recap we've got our board uh, from our controller which is going to basically do the conversion from this uh, analog you know a, a digital not analog sorry from this digital um, joystick and switches because obviously it's either on or off it's not uh, potential I could pay it yeah put my teeth back in it's not potentiometer controlled it is digital it's on or off um, so this board is going to do the conversion from these switches uh, to the USB um, we're going to have our enclosure uh, which is going to mount everything in it nicely and we're going to have <clears throat> uh, I'm just going to use this cable gland uh, on the on the enclosure um, and it's going to have a quite an industrial look um, which I don't mind um, and of course we'll need some pieces of wire to hook it up and solder everything together anyway guys right I'll stop uh, the video now uh, let's say this is going to be part one um, and I will uh, come back to you uh, once um, once I've sort of done a bit more prep I think the next part essentially will be me uh, marking out the holes and, and drilling those holes um, you know in preparation for receiving uh, the parts. So I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching